If you're anything like me, you've been waiting patiently for an orbital attempt for SpaceX Starship since they managed to land SN15 last year. Since then, with the FAA approval delays and a healthy set of engineering challenges, we have only seen what YouTubers have managed to scramble together from afar. Along the way, we've learned a whole lot about Elon Musk's vision for the orbital infrastructure, thanks in large part to interviews with Tim Dodd, the everyday astronaut. Today, we'll use what we learned to produce a configuration in Kerbal Space Program where we can achieve an orbital payload of 100 tons, all using stock parts and a little automation mod. Here you see a booster stage lifting a Starship-like second stage into the upper atmosphere before decoupling and performing a boost back burn to return to near the launch site. This booster uses eight gimbal-locked engines in a ring around a gimbaled center engine, very similar to the Falcon 9 configuration. The KOS mod offers the ability to run scripts to automate certain vessel behaviors. In this example, we mostly use steering and throttle commands. Links to information about the scripts are available in the video description. But uh, you're here for the details, so let's get into it. The first stage simply aims to lift the second stage to a high altitude where it can perform an ascent burn to climb and accelerate to orbital speed. Here we use 50 kilometers as the target apoapsis. After main engine cutoff, or MECO, it looks at first as if we don't have enough fuel to perform the landing sequence, but this is simply because the second stage is still attached. Once it's decoupled, the remaining fuel is more than enough to land the booster safely. After waiting a small grace period to allow the stages to separate, the booster engages its engine to adjust its trajectory back toward the launch site. With its course adjusted, we have several minutes before we begin the hover slam. Let's check in with the second stage. It makes a series of burns as it ascends to orbital altitude. There's an interplay between the horizontal velocity imparted to the second stage and the fuel required in the boost back phase. Clearly, more horizontal acceleration leads to longer boost back and larger fuel requirements. In this case, the first stage locks at 80 degrees elevation for the entire duration of the burn. The second stage must therefore make up the difference on its own. In order to achieve this without pushing our apoapsis too high, we use a series of burns to creep slowly into orbit. Here, we've succeeded in deploying a roughly 100 ton payload to low carbon orbit. Around the same time as the second stage is settling into orbit, the booster is performing its final landing sequence. The remaining fuel is far from enough to overcome all of the suborbital energy, but the dense atmosphere enables natural drag forces to slow down our large, mostly empty booster as it falls into ever thicker air. With the help of some drag fins for passive aerodynamic stability and extra drag, the craft is falling subsonic when it approaches the ground. All it needs is to perform the signature SpaceX hover slam to bring the velocity and distance to the ground to zero at the same time. So there we have it. 100 tons in orbit with a fully reusable booster landed safely near the launch site. And we did it all completely hands-free using automation. If you're interested in learning more about the automation techniques used here, check out our other videos showing how to automate moon and min-miss landings. Once again, you can find links to the craft and scripts used. Everything is in the description below. And as always, thanks for watching Kerbalism.